brother. Guys, message received. You want more Google autofill? And today we plan on delivering that. Today we ask, why does Harry Potter Google autofill? If you're not familiar with the Google autofill game, it's super easy. We just go to Google, type in why does Harry Potter, then each letter of the alphabet, and Google fills in the rest of the questions, which I then answer with 100%-ish accuracy. Occasionally, Google will throw in like an extra word or modifier at the beginning, but that's okay, we just roll with it. Let's begin. A, why does Harry Potter always go back to the Dursleys? Immediately a great question that has to do with one of the wackiest spells in all of Harry Potter, the Bond of Blood. Seriously, this spell is so niche. Like, it can only be activated if someone is presently the beneficiary of the Sacrificial Love Protection spell, which in our case, Harry is because Lily died for him. Then, if you are a third party, in our case Dumbledore, can cast the Bond of Blood spell on you, which is then sealed by your blood relative, who would be Petunia in our case, accepting you into their care, at which point the person who originally originally attacked you, Voldemort, then cannot harm you while you're in the house until you're 17 or permanently move out. And it's already so specific, but then the turning 17 part is just baffling to me. Like, how does the spell know when the wizarding government considers its citizens adult? Or is the spell just so old that it's literally what dictates the age of adulthood in the wizarding world, which I guess would be cool. But then also, if Harry's the only one to ever enjoy the benefits of sacrificial love, how could anyone even know about this spell? Like, do you see what I mean? It's just bonkers. And I used the word enjoy just there, but I'm sure Harry has never enjoyed a second of the fact that he lives at the Dursleys or that his parents are dead. <laughs> B, why does Harry Potter burn Quirrell? Okay, so burn Quirrell actually comes up first, but I also love the second question. Why does he break the Elder Wand? So I'm just gonna do them both. So first off, the reason Harry burns Quirrell is because of Lily's sacrifice, which is still protecting him from Voldemort, even as an 11 year old. And when Quirrell is touching him, he is actually acting as a Horcrux for Voldemort and is therefore repelled by the sacrificial love. Voldemort is eventually able to overcome this when he takes Harry's blood into himself in Goblet of Fire, but while that does let him physically and magically attack Harry, it also tethers Harry to life because now the sacrifice lives on in Voldemort, so really, that's a pretty bad move for him. As for breaking the Elder Wand, this is actually a movie-only decision by Harry. In the books, he just puts the wand back in Dumbledore's tomb, but either way, his goal is the same. I'm putting the Elder Wand, he told Dumbledore, who was watching him with enormous affection and admiration, back where it came from. It can stay there. If I die a natural death like Ignotus, its power will be broken, won't it? The previous master will have never been defeated. That'll be the end of it. <laughs> never been defeated? Okay, Harry. Arrogant much? Aren't you going on to become a dark wizard catcher? Come on! I know you just defeated Voldemort, but all pros have their off days, man. But basically all Harry's trying to do is to remove the wand as a threat from the future of wizarding kind. Returning it to Dumbledore's tomb is maybe a little bit more respectful, but for sure, breaking it is just absolutely more effective. So I like both options. C, why does Harry Potter come back to life? Okay, GC, weren't you even paying attention to B? Yeah, as we just said, it's because Voldemort takes Harry's blood into himself, which effectively makes Voldemort a love crux for Harry, which tethers Harry to life. But there does seem to be like one more layer to it that Harry also means to die. But I should have died. I didn't defend myself. I meant to let him kill me. And that, said Dumbledore, will I think have made all the difference. Actually, fun fact, when Harry does this, he also casts Sacrificial Love on everyone he dies for, including all the defenders of Hogwarts, which is why Voldemort's spells don't work on them very well later on. D, why does Harry Potter drop the Infinity Stone? <laughs> Okay, well, for one, Harry never had any Infinity Stones, although I guess in many ways he sort of is the embodiment of the Soul Stone, like one must die and all that. I guess in this scenario, Lily would have been the one to jump on Vormir and Harry gets the stone, or I guess actually what he ends up with is a piece of Voldemort's soul, which Voldemort himself then later destroys, like 
Thanos destroys the Soul Stone, so that's an interesting comparison. <laughs> we just did his Harry Potter Star Wars, but is Harry Potter Marvel? Do we only talk about one thing? Anyway, I think this question is actually about the Resurrection Stone, which Harry drops for a reason similar to the Elder Wand. Basically, he's removing the temptation from anyone else to go searching for the Hallows, or I guess at the very least, he's removing the ability for anyone to find the Hallows since now it's just randomly lost in the woods. Although if you ask me, someone else accidentally finding it sounds like an awesome plot for a future Harry Potter story. <laughs> e, why does Harry Potter end up with Ginny? <laughs> Uh, duh, do you even have to ask? Because of all of their palpable, absolutely undeniable on-screen attraction to one another, duh, I mean, who else is it gonna end up with? Hermione, his best friend and confidant who sticks by his side no matter what? Can you even imagine? Yeah, no, I see it. Mm -hmm. Harmony for life. Full video by clicking the card. But watch that later, I've only at like E, I've got so much more of the alphabet to go. F, why does Harry Potter fight Voldemort? Really? Seriously, F, that's your question? Uh, could it be because, I don't know, Voldemort murdered his parents? I mean, certainly that instilled a, quote, furious desire for revenge in Harry. The truly unavoidable reason though is because Voldemort set stock by the prophecy of the Chosen One, which states that one must die at the hands of the other. And while there's no real reason this has to be the case, Voldemort intends to make good on it no matter what, which guarantees that one will die at the hands of the other, and if Voldemort is hunting Harry no matter what, then yeah, Harry has to fight him. F. What are you, cold in here? Frosty as a snowman. No, no. Gee, why does Harry Potter get so dark? Do you mean visually in the movies or thematically as a story? Because visually, it feels like they went way too far and really probably could have added some color back, especially since thematically, the story's pretty dark, even if you turn the lights back on. <laughs> H, why does Harry Potter have so much money? So the reason for this is actually kind of funny. Harry is rich because his grandfather was the inventor of Sleek Easy's hair potion, which ended up quadrupling the Potter family's already considerable wealth. Hilariously though, despite the success of the potion and the reason for their wealth, both James and Harry Potter both have like endlessly messy hair. I, why does Harry Potter ignore Cho? Ah, Cho and Harry, a relationship for the ages. Three full books of build up for one kiss beneath the mistletoe in an awkward date at a tea shop, only for Cho's friend Marietta Edgecombe to turn in Dumbledore's army to Umbridge and ruin everything. Weirdly, Cho's not like super involved in this situation other than being the one who dragged Marietta to the DA meetings against her will, but after Marietta turns them in, these like large unremovable boils appear on her face, spelling the word sneak, and it turns out it was actually Hermione who was the one who arranged this little trick in case of such a betrayal, and Cho was already a little jealous of Hermione for being Harry's close female friend, so she disapproves of it while Harry thinks it's brilliant. And yeah, that's pretty much the end of those two and why Harry ignores Cho for a while. Really should've come for Hermione, man. Jay, why does Harry Potter just drop the resurrection stone? Um, excuse me, I think you mean the Soul Stone, G. Wait, no, wait. K, why does Harry Potter know parcel tongue? Oh, well this one is easy. So basically after Voldemort tried to kill Harry as a baby and the spell backfired, it splits Voldemort's soul and a tiny bit of that latches onto Harry, which actually makes Harry a Horcrux, but also gives him some of Voldemort's powers, such as speaking to snakes, which Voldemort is able to do because he is a direct descendant of Salazar Slytherin who possessed that rare gift. L, why does Harry Potter live under the stairs? Oh, so glad you asked. Short answer, because the Dursleys are the freaking worst. Nobody likes Vernon or Petunia, but they really want to make sure that Dudley knows that they do not favor Harry in any way at all. And like, what really drives this home for me is that their house is a four bedroom home, meaning they have not one, but two empty rooms upstairs they aren't letting Harry use. Like, even if one of them, it was just like a dedicated guest room, which is also indefensible. They still have a spare, and yet they make Harry live under the stairs. M, why does Harry Potter make me so happy? Oh, geez, I guess it probably 
depends on your age. I mean, as a child, for me, Harry Potter offered a wonderful form of escapism into the world of Hogwarts and magic and mystery. The story generated so many happy memories from our dad reading it out loud to us chapter by chapter, week by week. I have such fond memories wondering what would happen next, anticipating each new release, growing up with the character, staying up till midnight at bookstore parties, locking myself in the room for two days afterward to finish the book as fast as possible. I remember lining up for hours to get good seats on opening nights for the new movies, going to college and listening to the books on CD while I drove to visit my girlfriend slash now wife Beth who had given me the CDs because she also loved Harry Potter. Then I started a YouTube channel with my brother and discovered this entire community of amazing Harry Potter and other fandom nerds and feeling like I was just like finally accepted for who I was. Then we launched a podcast where now we're reading the books chapter by chapter with those fans like our dad did for us and like I'm now doing for my kids and I don't know I guess that's why it makes me so happy. That's really good. Oh thank you. <laughs> that was like a weirdly emotional one. <laughs> yeah. 100%. Hey, and guys, we need to pause right there to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Bespoke Post. Look, y'all know how much we love Bespoke Post around here, and it's for good reason. It's awesome. Specifically, an entire box of awesome. The box of awesome is a monthly subscription box filled with carefully chosen gear from the best small brands around the world. And right here, I've got the Switchback box. So let's take a look. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is a good one. Is this... Oh, is this? Oh, it's a shovel for, well, I mean, I think we all know what this is for when you're out camping, am I right? <laughs> Digging holes. <laughs> oh, man, is this like a, it's like a very, oh, it's like a military looking compass. Knife. This feels safe. Very safe. Oh, it's like a fire starter thing with like magnesium, dude. I This was like my favorite thing when I was a kid. It was like, we've got matches. Like, no, 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 no. I've got magnesium. Way better. And an inflatable light. Oh, that's cool. Oh, and is it solar powered? That is awesome. It feels like very lightweight. Honestly, if you don't know when we're not theorizing, one of the things Ben and I love to do is some backpacking. So this is all just like super awesome. And each piece really does have that like quality feel about it, right? Like, I knew this was a camping box, by the way, which is why I threw on this jacket because I'm ready for an adventure as soon as like 10 minutes from now. But of course, they've got way more than just camping stuff. And at any time, you can explore their huge selection of boxes that are available each month and swap out for something that suits your own fancy. I always feel really cool holding a knife, even though, I've, you know, the coolest thing I do with a knife is like, carve a pumpkin. Put that down before I cut myself. But hey, if you're having trouble deciding which box you want, which is totally understandable because there's so many cool ones, then no worries. I actually have a quiz at boxofawesome.com and it'll help you narrow in on what fits your unique lifestyle. So if you want a recommendation from me though, the Helix Wine Decanter is a total conversation piece. Oh, is that wine? It isn't a fancy thing? <laughs> You're so fancy. Otherwise, it is also totally free to sign up and you can skip a month or cancel any time. And, and you get a free mystery gift with your first monthly shipment when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter code SUPER at checkout. I tell you what it is, but it's a mystery, so. One more time, that is boxofawesome.com and code SUPER for a free mystery gift with your first monthly shipment. boxofawesome.com, code SUPER. Link is in the description down below. South. N, why does Harry Potter never use Avada Kedavra? Fantastic question. Short answer, Harry is just not in the business of killing. Like, ever. Like, Dumbledore teaches him the power of a whole and untarnished soul, and that is his main weapon against Voldemort, who has callously ripped his into like a million pieces. Or well, like eight. But interestingly, Harry does use the other two unforgivable curses throughout the story. He uses Crucio on Bellatrix after she kills Sirius and Imperio on one of the goblins at Gringotts to get behind the desk. Oh, why does Harry Potter only use Expelliarmus? Okay, well, he definitely doesn't for one thing. Even the fact that this becomes known as his signature spell is like a little odd to me. Like, yes, he does learn it first in the dueling club, but he never puts it to tremendous use until book four against Voldemort. But in the meantime, he does pick up another rather signature spell, Expecto Patronum, which he is arguably like the best in the world at. And yes, I mean that. His has this like amazing corporeal form and he fights off over a hundred Dementors 
at once, but I suppose on maybe a more conceptual level. The reason Expelliarmus was chosen to be Harry's signature spell is because it is the exact opposite of Voldemort's Avada Kedavra, a very deadly curse versus Harry's very non-violent conflict resolution disarming spell. P, why does Harry Potter pass out from the Dementors? Well, as explained by Lupin, Harry has just had horrors in his past the rest of his classmates just can't imagine, so the Dementors affect him far worse. In a nutshell, Harry just has worse memories to relive than the rest of them, which is kind of surprising that no one else passes out because they are all growing up in a post-first Wizarding War world, but whatever. Neville really seems like he has some horrors he could relive, if you ask me. Maybe he wasn't present for the torturing. Nothing for a Q, but R. Why does Harry Potter remind me of Christmas? This question's why I wore this shirt today. Mostly, I think it is because of this scene right here. Happy Christmas, Harry. Happy Christmas, Ron. Happy Christmas, Harry. Happy, Happy Christmas, Christmas, Ron. Harry being 11 before he has a proper Christmas morning is a pretty big deal. It really represents how much better life at Hogwarts is versus the Dursleys. I've got presents! Christmas in the first book, and especially the first movie, is given a lot of screen time for this purpose. Like, you get to see Hagrid dragging in the trees, Flitwick decorating the Great Hall, and Harry getting the cloak. Which, Harry getting the cloak, also pretty big deal because it allows him to see his parents later that night. Which, like, plot-wise, I've always known that, but I've never really considered how the first time Harry sees his parents it's on Christmas. In a way, it's as if he's actually being born into the wizarding world in that moment as his true place in the world. Huh. I wonder if there's any significance of being born on Christmas. That's a Jesus joke. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> S. Why does Harry Potter see a deer? Easy! Harry's father, James, could transform into a stag, which naturally means Harry's mother represents a doe. And since Snape has been in love with Lily for his whole life, his Patronus represents a doe, which, if you ask me, should act as this like sort of ironclad reminder to him every time he casts the spell that she truly belongs with James, but he still can't ever seem to get over her. Forever. T, why does Harry Potter take Snape's tears? Okay, so this is another like movie versus book thing. In the book, Snape gives him memories out of his head, similar to how Slughorn does in book six, but I guess I thought it would be more like visually emotional for Harry to collect those same memories from Snape's tears instead. I don't know, I guess it's fine. You, why does Harry Potter use inches? Wow, you know what? I have never considered that. Britain is metric, and Ollivander is as old as time, and yet uses inches for some reason? And no, this is not like an American versus English printing of the book. Even if you have the English printing, it says inches. But it's very much something I hadn't considered, and I had to look it up, and I found a very short and concise Pottermore article, and I'm just gonna read the whole thing to you, because it's only like two sentences. Just as British witches and wizards do not use electricity or computers, they have never turned metric. They are not governed by the decisions of the Muggle government, so when the process of metrication, switching to metric measurements, began in 1965, witches and wizards simply ignored the change. Witches and wizards are not averse to laborious calculations, which they can, after all, do metric Logically, so they do not find it inconvenient to weigh in ounces, pounds, and stones, measure in inches, feet, and miles, or pay for goods in nuts, sickles, and galleons. Okay, so two things there. First of all, that actually makes a lot of sense in universe. I like that. But, but also, since when can they do math magically? Like, how does that never come up? And how? How? Mathematics locomotor. Mathematics. Sorry. Surprisingly, nothing for V, since Harry's worst enemy's name starts with V, but whatever. <laughs> w, why does Harry Potter wear the same shirt? Yeah, this is sort of a weird thing you might not have ever noticed, but yes, Harry wears the same blue t-shirt in every movie. My guess is that he got it from Dudley when he was 11 and it just continued to fit until he was 17. Harry might be swimming in that sleek easy potion money, but he is humble when it comes to his wardrobe. Also, also, actually, actually, in Deathly Hallows, is Hermione wearing Harry's old shirt from his first year that now fits her? <laughs> no wonder Ron left. Hermione for life. I'm over here.
Out the sausage is made, people. Nothing for X or Y, but Z! Why does Harry Potter zombies? Okay, Z, that's like a really grammatically incorrect question, but I'm gonna give you a pass because you normally don't show up with anything, so bravo. But at the same time, Harry Potter doesn't really zombie at all. The word zombie does come up in Philosopher's Stone as something like Quirrell ran into, but it's never actually a thing Harry has to deal with. Sort of. There is like a version of zombies in Harry Potter, which are just called the Inferi, which do vary slightly because they are corpses that are reanimated by dark magic rather than corpses that came back to life. Part of the decision to use Inferi in Harry Potter instead of zombies had to do with how much zombies get portrayed on their own in pop culture, and it gave the Inferi like a way to stand out as being unique. Plus, there's just so many different versions of zombies out there, and in some cultures, it is the case that like sorcerers are controlling them by imparting part of their soul to them, which then sort of conflicted with the overall Horcrux plot. So, just to avoid any sort of cross contamination, Inferi were used instead. But there you go, guys. Those are the answer to Google's most common questions about the man himself, Harry Potter. These socks are amazing. Guys, thanks so much for watching. At always, I know I made a bunch of jokes about why Harry should end up with Hermione in this video. If you want to see a whole video about why we think that, you can check that out right here. But I'd love to also know what are your other favorite ships in the Harry Potter fandom? Let me know in the towel section down below. But Ben, otherwise, I will see you in another life, brother.